at the edge of Death Valley. It's weird and unusual and unique. A man puts a dusty way station on the map. But the town and his legacy fall on hard times. I was hearing from the residents that it was an eyesore. Has he left his family a money pit? We want you to keep this in the family at all costs. Or a monument. Sometimes in life, we don't appreciate things until they're gone. I'm Jamie Colby, and today I'm driving through the Mojave Desert on my way to the tiny town of Baker, California. It's halfway between Los Angeles and Las Vegas, just a tiny dot on the map, 800 people. It embodies the weirdness of both those cities, and its largest attraction, definitely its tallest, has become one family's rather strange inheritance. My name is Larray Hargis, and my father, Willis Heron, set out to build the world's tallest thermometer. Hi. I'm Jamie. Hi, Jamie. I'm Larray. Nice to meet you. It's big. It is the world's tallest thermometer. Well, if someone figured this roadside attraction would get you to stop and gawk, it sure as heck worked on me. Hi. How are you, Janice? I'm Hi. Jamie. Nice to meet you, Jamie. Today, Larray and her sister, Janice Nysis, run a gift shop in the shadow of the tower. They sell thermometer t-shirts, thermometer hot sauce, even thermometer thermometers. Yes, this really is the world's tallest thermometer. And it would be strange enough just to inherit a 134-foot thermometer in the middle of the desert. But what's as remarkable is the mission that Lorraine and her family took on after her father died in 2007. You sure? I gotta get a closer look. I tell Larray's husband, Bill, I'm ready for a challenge. I've been training to climb to the top. I'm going in. Okay. Why did he say it that way? I just bombed it this morning. For the spiders? Spiders. I'm a girl of nature. Black They're widows? just little. They're little spiders. Black widow spiders. Yeah. Yep, um, I, I haven't. You better uh, close it up. But, you we'll know, keep them in there. Even this host <laughs> has to draw the line at black widow spiders. The story of this strange inheritance begins with a young man who falls in love with the California desert. In the early 1950s, after service in the Air Force and college, Willis Heron heads west from his home in Kentucky to join his father in Barstow, California where his dad has become a restaurateur. He and his father had a couple restaurants in Barstow, and he was successful. My dad was very personable. Successful enough that a local businessman offers to partner with young Willis on an all-night diner in Baker, 60 miles up the road. You may think a place known as the Gateway to Death Valley is an unlikely spot for an eatery, but Willis sees it differently. He knew that people would need to stop between Los Angeles and Las Vegas. At a time when few cars have air conditioning, Baker is a perfectly located oasis, a spot for gamblers to cool off from the desert heat. Pretty soon, Willis's burger joint called Bun Boy is a landmark. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, winners drive in to celebrate and losers drown their sorrows in strawberries? Fresh strawberry pie, that was what it was known for. It was definitely kind of an Americana diner. The big breakfasts, but also, you know, the burgers, the specialty sandwiches and things like that. In 1971, Willis falls in love with Barbara Sturm, who comes with a house full of daughters, Larray, Janice, and Terry. Just the kind of workforce you need for a family restaurant. We all started as bussers, and we did dishwashing, and we did waitressing. This is the menu, right, of Bun Boy, yes. the original. The burger was three ninety five, and it came with coleslaw, french fries, or potato salad. Just deal of a deal. And a smiling waitress. <laughs> Willis will eventually buy out his partner and become the biggest fish in the town's very small pond. We had three restaurants, two motels, a few gas stations, a grocery store. 
<laughs> and pretty much within a block. Baker booms. In the late 70s, Willis buys a...